Sarah Lewis, Indonesia Manta Project. So right now we're in Raja Ampat in a place called Ayau, which is this beautiful atoll. And we're looking for manta rays. Two dinghies whisk across open water. I'm a conservation biologist that has specialized in manta rays for the last 10 years. In 2010, I decided to come to Indonesia and I founded the Indonesian Manta Project. She pilots a drone from the dinghy. This morning we were out with our team basically using drones to scan the area to see if we can see manta rays on the surface feeding or a little bit deeper cleaning. Sarah and Nesha watch the drone's camera display. So a manta ray is the world's biggest ray. It's the second largest fish that exists in the ocean after the whale shark. Um, it's what we call an elasma break. And it basically means that they have a skeleton that's made of cartilage rather than um, bone. So there are two species of manta ray found around the world. We have the oceanic manta ray, and the other species is manta alfredi, or reef manta ray. A manta ray glides over a coral reef. Manta rays are fished um, throughout their range. Often local communities have hunted them for food, but in the last 20 years there's been this demand for their gill plates. Um, sadly, this trade, this demand has really driven manta ray fisheries, and especially here in Indonesia. She pulls on some snorkeling goggles. And so what I've been doing for the last nine years is basically trying to learn more about the Indonesia's manta ray populations so we can better protect them. So my career kind of took a turn from really focusing on understanding the manta's ecology and doing the research to more focusing on their conservation. She snorkels with a camera as a manta ray swims below. Then on the boat, Sarah reviews data on a laptop. These are all the different individuals. So every time we sight a manta, it gets entered into here. So photo identification is basically one of the main research techniques. Every single manta ray will have these different spot patterns and it's different for every individual. So it's kind of like a human fingerprint and we're able to identify different individuals. We use GoPros set on a time lapse, taking a photo every second, and we leave the GoPros down on the reef in an area that we know manta rays will go to. We'll also make other observations, such as um, whether it's male or female, if it was mature or immature, we try and get a size estimate. Um, if it was a pregnant female, we'll, we'll note that down as well. So, although this is just a photo, we can get so much information um, from this, this work. Photos of manta rays as they swim overhead. I'm a foreigner, I'm not from Indonesia. It's so important that we actually empower and engage local communities in the work that we're doing. So what we do here in Indonesia now, we also work really closely with those fishing communities to try and help them transition away from hunting mantas to other alternative livelihoods. And we also work really closely with the governments to ensure that we can get policy in place that protects mantas and helps better manage their populations. And finally, young Indonesian scientists and conservationists. Nesha is one of our um, amazing team members and she is our project manager for our project on an island called Rote. And she's doing some amazing stuff. She's really taken that project to the next level. It's amazing to work with those young people and get them involved in the projects we're doing and help support their own projects. Yeah. Nesha free dives and mounts a camera on a rock before resurfacing. A cluster of small fish follow in a manta ray's wake. 